Thank you so much to all of you who requested a video of our van conversion because it gave us an opportunity to open the box of memories and take out all the footage that we recorded while creating our tiny house. And this video will be kicking off a new van conversion series that will be launching, uh, that will be setting up early May. So right now we are working with an incredible photographer and building out her van. And we're going to give you some step-by-step -step guides on how we're actually doing each task. To prepare your van for conversion, first you'll need to remove everything from your van. So if you have a passenger van, obviously that means you need to remove the seats, uh, all the panels, pegboard. We were actually careful enough to remove those panels and we were able to sell them for a little bit of money, which actually helped out. Then the next step is going to be insulating the van. For our insulation, we used denim in combination with Reflectix. You could also use wool, which we highly recommend, which is what we used for our recent fan conversion. We'll never go back to anything else uh, but wool. You definitely want to insulate your floor because floor tends to get really cold. Stuff insulation in all the little nooks and crannies in your van because if you travel to extreme temperatures, you will be happy that you did it. To recap, to prepare your van for conversion, you're gonna follow two steps. One, remove everything. Two, insulate everything, including the floor, and of course, ceiling and the walls. After doing your van preparation, that's when you're one gonna start probably planning out your electrical and start running your wiring. Uh, for us, what we started with was we installed our solar panels and our fan up on the roof and then ran our wires down to our electrical compartment. Uh, from there, you're going to obviously want to figure out where your compartment is going to be located. Um, so your battery banks, your charge controller, your inverter, all of that. Uh, for us, we kind of kept it in one spot just underneath one of the benches here. After you figure out where your electrical uh, compartment is going to be located and installing your solar panels, you're going to want to start determining where your lights are going to be and what lights are going to be controlled by what switches. So once we figured out all, all of that, um, we started running the wires down to the electrical compartment and then set up our inverter and our fuse block. Mostly you have two systems in a van, you have AC and a DC. AC is the 120 volt system, which is what you would usually find in a house to run home appliances. Um, and a DC is more what you see in a car, RV, and things like that, it's a 12 volt system. Um, so we have both. The 12 volt system is very, very easy to hook up. So that is what's actually powering up our lights, our fan, and a couple little charging blocks. Um, in most cases, it actually does charge or um, power up your fridge. Uh, for us, we actually went with an AC fridge. We, we really liked the design and just the size of it. It was really, really nice. Uh, after that, after setting up your DC, um, you're going to want to set up your inverter. So that's going to be your AC power. Um, so that one was a little tricky. So you're going to be running base your batteries to your inverter from the inverter to your circuit breaker. In summary, for your electrical setup, what you're going to want to do is first Set up your solar. Second, determine where your box is going to be or where your actual electrical compartment is going to be located. Uh, third, determine on how many lights you're going to have and switches and outlets and where they're going to be located. Fourth, um, start running your wiring because um, you don't want to wait too long on that. Uh, fifth, start plugging in all of your wiring to your inverter, into your fuse block, and also your charge controller to your batteries. Um, test everything and then just make sure everything is all good and you can start building your structures. Once you insulated everything, you're going to be ready to start building structures and that's when fun begins because you're actually building your home. First, you'll want to measure everything and create a floor plan or a blueprint. Um, it's really, really helpful to go in your van, tape, use, use masking tape, tape off everything maybe on the floor, on the walls. If you have extra time, create three-dimensional uh, models using like cardboard and you could have your little you know kitchen movable and where the benches go and so you could kind of visualize your home a little bit better first things that you'll do in order to start building structures is to build studs just like in the regular home when you construct your home you're gonna build the studs and then you're gonna build walls um, around those studs so we use steel studs for our benches uh, to give them extra support but also make it lightweight and then for the ceiling and for the walls 
we did um, furring strips and so we use those as studs and then to them we mount ceiling or the wall. To recap, to start building structures in your van, you will first want to measure everything really well, decide on what you want in your van. The second step is to create a blueprint or floor plan, maybe tape it off, we highly recommend that. And then you're ready to begin building your studs. So using steel studs or fern strips for your ceiling and your walls. For your living room, the first thing that you want to decide on is what type of configuration for your bed or your benches you want to have. And we chose to have a U-shaped design. The back bench is great because you get to look out um, at a beautiful view and enjoy it. Maybe if you're a mountain biker and you need to have storage underneath, the fixed bed solution is a little bit better. Another consideration is, are you going to have a table? And if so, is it going to be a pedestal table mounted to sort of the middle of your living room? Um, or you're going to have a lagoon mount table. We chose the lagoon mount table just because we felt like it was the most flexible solution and it, it really works really well. And once you remove the table or remove the mount, it feels like a very open space. We love also how it turns into a big king size bed in our living room. Another consideration is cushions. Uh, what material are you gonna have them made from? Uh, where are you gonna order them? Uh, can you make them yourself or do you need to go to someone? How thick do you want them to be? We went with three inch natural latex cushions wrapped in wool. So actually all together it's about four inches and it's pretty soft. You could choose your own firmness um, depending on what mattress you like. The most important thing is you want to create cushions that will fit and, and be snug together so when you lay on them it feels very comfortable and even. And the last thing to consider for your van overall, not just your living room of course, is curtains. Are you going to make them? Are you going to buy them? There's different uh, pull down shades. Um, there are curtains that sort of close and open up. There are window coverings using magnets in the van. You'll definitely want to have something that reflects the heat and also keeps the heat inside the van when you're in cold weather. So to recap, for your living room, you will need to think about your bed design and table. What is the configuration that you're going to have? Second thing is, are you prioritizing upper um, cabinet storage or lower storage? So depending on your lifestyle and depending on what you're doing with the van, one might be preferred over the other. Another thing to think about is cushions and of course your curtains or window coverings. Okay, for your kitchen checklist, you the first question you wanna ask yourself is how big do you want your kitchen to be? Are you gonna be doing a lot of cooking or just a little bit? Maybe you just like to eat snacks on the road. We love to cook, so we allocated a lot of space to the kitchen. The second question is, what is the configuration? Do you want drawers? Do you want shelves and doors? Are you, uh, do you prefer upper cabinet storage or maybe lower cabinet storage? So of course you want to decide on the fridge. Is it going to be a top loading fridge, sort of like the cooler style, or is that going to be um, a one door, a two door fridge? The next decision is a sink. What type of sink, what finish? Uh, you could go with stainless steel, which is a little bit lighter. Um, there are some smaller size sinks uh, made of plastics, different types of plastics um, or ceramic. We chose to go with the larger size, deep size, real sink because we do a lot of dishes and cooking and so we just wanted it to feel like a real home and we weren't too worried about the weight because we were saving weight in so many other ways in our van. You want to think about your countertop. 
There are so many different types that you could choose from different colors different finishes different looks so that's really gonna be your choice and your preference uh, we chose to go with African mahogany countertop that we have glued together put together uh, ourselves and we just put coconut oil on it and we absolutely love that another consideration is especially if you have a cargo van that you're converting is are you going to have a window in your kitchen or a backsplash both are great we love windows and obviously we didn't really have a choice but we love having a window in the kitchen especially when doing the dishes opening the sliding door and looking out at the scenery is so beautiful but backsplash could be a great choice too because you can have different styles and also if uh, if you're splattering when you're cooking um, it's easy to clean and another thing to consider is do you want a stove that's going to be built in or movable we went with a movable stove just because we like to cook outside we like to be as much um, outside as possible so to recap for your kitchen checklist First, you're gonna make a decision on how big your kitchen is gonna be. How important is it to you? What type of configuration do you want? You need to decide on your fridge. Uh, you need to decide on your sink and uh, countertop. And of course, for your cooking, you need to think about whether you're gonna have a built-in stove or movable stove. And for the general look, in the kitchen is it going to have a backsplash or a window for your bathroom the first thing of course is to decide whether or not you're gonna have a bathroom and how extensive of a bathroom do you want do you want it to be just a simple toilet or maybe a bathroom with the shower and hot water so we went with the full bathroom just because we wanted to go off the grid and be able to take a shower in our van and feel comfortable. There are many choices for a toilet. So you could go with cassette or composting toilet. Uh, you could do urine separating toilet, which is what we uh, chose to go with. But obviously, it's it's kind of uh, comes down to a question do you want to be able to just go number one or number two if you go going to have a cassette toilet and those are probably easier to empty you just take it out of the van and empty um, in the appropriate area or if you're going to have a black water tank you'll need to drill a hole through the van and have piping going down into the black water tank and then figure out how you're gonna empty the black water tank we do have a black water tank underneath our van which we empty periodically and we highly recommend to do it you know once every couple of days for sure especially in the hot weather if you do go with the shower of course Step number one is to waterproof everything. It's fun also because you get to pick the designs. We went with sticky tile that looks like marble and a lot of people actually think it's marble. Um, it looks great. And we did use a lot of caulking uh, around the seams just to make sure that everything is completely sealed and waterproof. Before you close off the walls and with tiling in or finishing touches in your bathroom you definitely want to test everything um, so when you run the water lines and plug in the water heater make sure you test it for leaks and ensure that everything is working correctly so in summary for your bathroom checklist question number one do you want a bathroom and how extensive of a bathroom do you want in your van if you do go with the bathroom what kind of toilet do you want with shower make sure you waterproof everything test all your water lines for leaks seal everything waterproof everything and use tile or sticky tile to finish it off mm -hmm.